What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back again with another Tottenham update and reporting on all the latest Tottenham news. And to help us pass through all the noise is the brilliant Tottenham Non Tour's very own Brian Daigle. How are you doing today, Brian? I am very, very good, mate. Enjoyed my time with you <laughs> talking all things Spurs today. And now it's the juicy content. Now it's the uh, developments. Let's do this. Oh, and the first one, I think, will be very relevant to uh, how you, what you're thinking about. And it's about Amanda Staveley and Bloomberg. The business side of Bloomberg has reported that Amanda Staveley, who has stepped down from the board of Newcastle, is searching for her next football investment with stakes in Tottenham among the possible targets she's exploring. Staveley has recently raised about $500 million through her investment fund, PCP Capital Partners, and has been looking at a number of football clubs to deploy the cash according to a person familiar with the matter it's unclear who has who who the backers are Stavely is well connected in the Gulf region um are we looking at some cash injection there has been a lot of talks surrounding Tottenham and some um, partial investment hasn't there uh, for a number of months now and could this be what we're looking at here with Stavely getting involved uh so first of all we, like you said, Simeon, the, the problem that we see here is for the last 18 months, maybe even two years, we've heard time and time again that we're in talks for investors to come in and then it's talk for about two, three days and then it dies a death, whether it's because they can't agree the right percentage with, with Levy or if it's it was complete nonsense. Um, one of the biggest things that are concerning me right now is... We're hearing a lot of this investment isn't to go onto the football pitch. It's to be like a cash injection for Ange and the team. It's more towards the depth and towards the hotel and other ventures outside of the football. Um, I've always said I want new investors, whether it be minor or preferably majority, and, and Levy's gone. With this, my, 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 my only concern is, is this towards infrastructure? off the pitch as opposed to development on the pitch and if it's well, development on the pitch yes 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 well even if it is toward the infrastructure and these other things it doesn't that just mean it frees up more funds for tottenham to be able to spend in, a, in, in on the transfer market potentially potentially yes but not going by what i've seen from the the current regime is it hasn't looked that way and it hasn't reflected that maybe a large some being invested of 500 let's just say it is the 500 million maybe maybe that could be the catalyst for for freeing up funds to go towards Ange. but uh like i said i i, I hope that this isn't, isn't just talk and there is some serious movement and traction in it because any kind of investment i will welcome um and let's face it what they have done at newcastle they and remember this is just stavely and i believe her husband isn't uh they've come in and they have done well at newcastle under all the clouds that people thought they were going to do i think newcastle have done things the right way um and i would welcome the investment yeah and look whatever you want to say about um spurs and whatever i mean there's no surprise that steve lee's looking at tottenham because it is a smart investment with all the you know events they have and the money they do bring on bring in on match days and it is pretty much guaranteed to you know, be bringing a lot of money over the next few years. So um, with the NFL as well. So I'm not surprised that they're looking at Tottenham thinking that could be a very smart uh, investment there. And uh, I, I want a, want a piece of that, essentially. Um, but let's move on. To, let's talk some transfer business now. Matt Hughes of The Sun is reporting that Tottenham and West Ham are two clubs remaining in the race for Ivan Tony, with Brentford now prepared to accept less than the 50 million um, price tag for the striker, and they could be set to slash the uh, price tag. Um, is that, does that make sense to you? Um, considering he's got one year left on his deal, uh, that, you know, Brent, there is some wiggle room now at Brentford, considering that no one's really prepared to pay the price they're asking for. This has got David, David Rea vibes all written all over it, wasn't it? where it was what they held out for and uh, deal fell through with us. I went nuts, um, not knowing how good Vicario would be, not even knowing who Vicario was. Uh, hmm. We obviously know who Ivan Tony is. We know he's in the last year of his contract. Everyone knows there's no chance of him re-signing uh, a new one. So 
Brentford have got to think uh, smartly right now. And when his price drops, there is a Premiership striker there that knows how to score goals in this in this um, in this division. So if the price gets lower, if what, what was it they're talking forty fifty? You you're soon dropping mm-hmm. down to Jonathan David kind of levels like twenty five thirty five kind of that kind of ballpark. And if it does drop to that level, and I'm a fan of Jonathan David, and obviously I see him a bit with, with my Canadian uh, roots right now. If you get Jonathan David at 25, or let's say Ivan Tony 35, 40, or 35, let's say, bring me Ivan Tony all day, every day. Even though there's maybe reservations about his attitude, he's a bit older than David as well, you'd say he's still worth it? Uh, I, I think right now, from what we what we saw as well, what we, what we do need, especially with Richarlison being injured again, um, and that's a huge concern. Whether you want to doubt his footballing ability or not with Richarlison, his 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 uh, dependency to stay fit is is up for question. Um, and Ivan Tony, we need we need as Jose Mourinho said. I'm not going to say the phrase, but everyone knows what I'm alluding to. Tony is one of those players that will be a menace and will get you goals. Um, I have said throughout the window, he's not the player, the striker I want. Um, But when you start talking about them dropping their price, Tottenham will be all over it, won't it? Of course, I think their uh, their eyes, their ears will be pricking up for sure. um, As you would say, the the Jaws music. (laughs) For sure. For sure. Uh, Daniel Levy will be smelling blood. Um, the Sun are also reporting that Tottenham are looking to hijack Fulham's £40 million move for Manchester United midfielder Scott McTominay, they're reporting. Um, I would be massively shocked if Tottenham were to make a move for Scott McTominay. I don't see him as a midfielder that would fit in at Tottenham. I actually think his best position from what I've seen at Man United, might actually be just behind the striker, kind of just off the striker. Uh, I think that's where he's played his best and that's where he's been the most effective. So um, if we're looking for like a number six or number eight, I don't think McTominay fits that bill, to be honest. I don't think he's technically good enough. Um, And I think now in the number 10, we've got Madison and Bergval there. Um, I think 40 million for McTominay would not make any sense whatsoever if if there was any truth to it. Is this going to be the next midfielder that we go for after Conor Gallagher? This will be the next rumour that, that drags on. I think, honestly, I, I McTominay did very well for Manchester United, got him out of jail many a time. And I think mm. as someone like Fulham, he could really, really shine. Um, Archie Gray, why, why are we going to go spend another £40 million on a midfielder when we've got a younger and I think will be in a couple of years, better than McTominay and better than Gallagher to that to that point. So, so I hope this is paper nonsense uh, uh, and uh, agents and journalism putting two and two together and coming up with three hundred because um, I don't see this and how this improves the squad in any way. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it doesn't really make any sense to me. I don't see where he fits in. I don't think he's good enough to be honest. Uh, from what I've seen, I think he's very, he's quite a limited player, um, in my opinion. So I don't see why um, Ange would be interested in him. But, oh, well, you never know. Uh, maybe it's one to keep an eye on. But I, I think this is probably just uh, a bit of tabloid rubbish. Uh, and the last one is from Dean Jones Soccer. He's claiming that Victor Jokeres is firmly on Tottenham's radar. And there is growing confidence that the striker could be signed in a cut price deal. There's obviously rumours that um, he, if, if anyone wants to bring him in, he would have to cost upwards of £80 million, uh, considering that's his release clause. But uh, Dean Jones is claiming that his sources are saying that Sporting are actually willing to accept a lower bid for Jokeres and uh, he's one definitely I'd be very much interested in I think he's got the physicality I think he's got the finishing ability as well he's got a brilliant record for Sporting and for um, Coventry over the past few seasons Uh, so what do you reckon about this potential rumour do you reckon there's any truth to it first of all before we speak about if there's truth to it this is and I've said it all summer this is my number one striker that I want. This is the guy that I wanted Spurs to sign. Like obviously Eze is my number one uh, target, but for the number nine position, I am so impressed with this guy. And I think 
he can be the exact player we need to play in that position. Um, if I had a choice, him and Tony, regardless of fee, I'm, I'm going for him. I, I think he has the power. I think he's got the attributes to score goals of all types. Um, I was I was doing a show yesterday and someone said, what would people have said if we had signed him from Coventry last season rather than Sporting? I'm like, well, that was a bit of a... The question is, we had just got rid of Kane. So whoever had come in, it would have been, no matter who it was, oh my God, they're not ready to fit his boots or we've got 100 million for Kane and this is what we do. I love this striker. I, I really want him. Um, I, I I still think that the, the fee is going to be, no matter what they reduce it to, what would you reckon, Simeon? They'd reduce it down to what? 70, 60, 60, 60 maybe. Are, are, are Spurs prepared to get, or is Levy prepared to spend £60 million pounds on someone that's looked good on a YouTube compilation and had a good season in sporting. And we all know what happened last time. We smashed our transfer fee record for a certain Frenchman. Um, I, 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 I really want this to happen. Do I believe we're interested? Yes. Do I think we'll meet sporting's uh, um, evaluation or sorry, evaluation of, of the player? That's the part I'm struggling with. But I'm delighted to finally see we're being linked with strikers and it's someone of the standard of this man. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what you think of him, Simeon, but this is a yes, yes, yes for me. Yeah, for me, I definitely want him through the door. I think uh, he's, I think he ticks all the boxes. I think when it comes to the profile, his current um, uh, record at the moment, he's done it in English football, albeit it was in the championship, but he did score a lot of goals in English football. Um, so I think he's worth taking a punt on, and I think he's worth um, uh, like us looking, really looking at him as our next striker, to be honest. I was maybe hesitant at 85 million. I'm thinking, is that a bit too much? Is he really that good? Um, at 60, I think he's definitely worth um, taking a risk on. And I think um, he really fits the bill of what we're trying to do, I think, with our number nine. So I really like the thought of uh, Jokeres. Um He said an unbelievable season last season out in Portugal. So I'd be very interested in bringing him in if there's a cut price deal to be had, for sure. Um, I was thinking if it was a choice between Jonathan David at 25 and Jokeres at 85 I probably would have gone with David just because um, I think that is there a massive difference in risk there and will will Jokeres get 50 million will 50 millions worth more goals than David probably not I would say but when it comes to 60 million I think then the balance tips into Jokeres' favour in that point I think if you look at it that way that you said Simeon if if you look at David at 25 that would leave, let's just say, let's just say it was the 85. Then that would leave 60 for Eze. And if it was Eze and David mm. or Gyokarez, then I'm going to pick because of my love for Eze. Mm. I'm going to go for Eze and David. David. But I, if someone said to me right now, Brian, you can have whatever number nine you want within reason, mm -hmm. completely like the, the the pipe dream that's never even happened in Isaac from Newcastle, where I think that's a lot of people not happening in a million years, especially the price Newcastle would demand. But Gyokarez is my first one that I want out of all the ones, the Sescos, the the Penders, all the other millions of strikers we've been linked with. And at 60 million, like you said, I think hopefully we'd bite their hands off. And it's just whether we could agree the structure of the payment and get him in. I would be if Gyokarez comes in at Spurs and is holding that shirt, I will be absolutely over the moon and happy to praise the club. Uh, putting their money where their mouth is and bringing in a striker that could really do a job for us. Yeah, completely agree. But look, that is all we have time for, for today's Tottenham Update. Let me know in the comment section below all your thoughts on anything we discussed today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs. Come on you Spurs.